right, so it's pouring rain outside. I'm here alone and I'm just practicing the resonator dulcimer dobro working with this tone bar. So I just thought I'd just film some of my practice. I do that sometimes. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I play, uh, you know, I play hymns a lot. So one of the best ones I know, um, and what I mean by that is I know it really well uh, and play it on dulcimer, regular, okay? So I wanna try to get some of those notes that I use, you know, playing it regular on this, like this. So I'm gonna be experimenting with things, trying out some, trying out, trying out adding notes. I'm gonna do some practice without strum machine and some practice with strum machine. For anyone curious, I have strum machine set up at 50 beats per minute and I have the feet uh, category turned on. I have the mandolin turned off. So it's just bass guitar and this like don't good don't good don't good don't good kind of feet thing. It sounds really cool. So listen to that first. But um Okay, it's not gonna play for me. Let's see. You can hear that rain just coming down. Alright. One, two, see if you can hear that three. beat. Almost like a horse. And it's kind of cool. So I'll just play a little bit with it on for now. struggle with is being tasteful with your notes. You don't want to overnote it. You don't want to undernote it. So like that's what I'm really learning here is really important. I think I'm probably overnoting it, but I really want to put in some more notes. But um I'm also learning how to this you've got to really really do a lot of finesse kind of stuff with this. And you always have to have your fingers trailing you. So um one thing I'll do is keep my pinky down on the dulcimer and obviously my my finger just fits right into that tone bar perfectly but that's why these things are awesome but i just have my i just have this finger always 
just kind of down just below that so it'll always touch the strings and you'll hear when I don't like you can really hear it and then of course over here I've got a black mountain pick I love black mountain picks thank you so much Cole he sent me a whole bunch of theirs they are awesome but I like it because it's got a spring there and it's really comfortable this is the medium and then I've got some Ernie Ball banjo picks and trying to get used to picks again, you'll hear me get caught a lot. So I'm trying to get over that. But, so now what I'm going to do is I have to turn it off for just a second. I'll turn it right back on. I'm getting a text. But um, I'm going to play it um, without the backing track because I want you to hear, um, you know, kind of what I'm working on as far as the notes by itself. Okay? Be right back. All right, so now I'm just going to uh, kind of play it without the backing track. I love, you know, they have this thing over top of the bridge and boy, I really like having that as an anchor point, especially if I'm going to be playing with picks, but so the first note is right here. And I'm playing some intro notes. metallic sounds. So my little, um, um, just working on different things, you know? So yeah, I'll be back. Okay. So let me move the camera a little bit to where you can see a little more of this. Um, what's happening here, but you know, so you need to locate your melody notes. before you get going on something. So anyway, um, this right here is the hardest part to me. Obviously this too, I mean, it's all different. But it's super fun. Figuring out how to not make this sucker make a lot of noises. that you don't want it to make, like these metallic. Getting good, tasteful tone is gonna be something you really have to finesse over here. Whoops, I, s I went too slow there. So you can hear that. And when I do it with, when I do it correctly, you don't hear it as bad. See how loud that is? So um, it's all about putting that finger down behind it.
So, oh my gosh, it's fun. Um, let's turn on the backing track some more because, yeah, that's really fun to play with the backing track. Here we go. Let's see if I can get it to come on again. Sometimes I miss over here. Sometimes I miss my target note. And, um, you know, I'm obviously missing over here a lot. But that'll come with just practice. Super fun to play. I cannot put it down. Um, yeah. Really, really fun to play. So, yeah. Uh, what I would say is, even, you know, whatever you're practicing... Doesn't matter what instrument you're playing. The first thing you need to do is find the melody notes. Just the melody. So, right? Right? So you gotta find that melody. And if you know your scales, like you should, in the key of D, learn them, learn them, learn them, then you know what notes you can use to do these little runs up to the note. So this is my first note, right? So I'm just running up my scale a little bit to that note, right? You don't want to use all of them. Then that other part where it goes, let's see. Uh, so you can use these little runs. entertaining for you. I messed up a lot. Um, but you know, this is just part of the practice process. You do mess up a lot. You have little technique things you have to learn and do and figure out. And you know, the melody is the most important thing. You have to hit that melody and highlight the melody, right? You don't want to get lost in it. And then, um, this is for anything. And then, um, you know, all the technique and stuff comes after that. But highlighting the melody, I got to figure out the tasteful, you know, the most tasteful notes too. So that's, that's kind of a challenge. And then, uh, you know, timing. Okay. You got to have it timed right. If it does, if it's not in time and if your timing is real wonky, it's going to sound terrible. So if you need help with that, strum machine, strum machine, strum machine, strum machine, you know, <laughs> And, you 
know, doing those, getting those to sound right is, is fun too. tell you how much I'm enjoying this. Uh, just playing to back and tracks, you know, uh, super, super fun. And just kind of a whole new world for me uh, with never touch, you know, I've never played like a dobro or anything like that. And this, this is a really cool thing. <laughs> the one I got, this might be a little heavy. I might actually, I think it was a medium or something like that. Five, I want to say five ounces or something. I don't know, but I may get a lighter one just because it seems like I'm not, I'm not on all the strings a lot, at least not yet. So I may get a little bit lighter one so it doesn't quite push down this melody string quite as much. I mean, it's not touching the fretboard or anything, um, but obviously you're never pressing down on it. You're never, I mean, the weight just, just goes down, but, um, I may experiment with a couple of different, because they have different weights of these things. I may get one a little bit lighter.